Welcome back, it's Back to the Basics. I'm Sean Barr and we are talking gnat. Not the annoying little buzzy little Not that kind of gnat. It's network address translation gnat. Let's go! Welcome back, we are talking gnat. And then we're gnatcha. I don't know. Anyway, so we're talking NAT. So there's all types of different use cases for NAT. So what is NAT? Well, it's network address translation, and it's when you're taking one IP and you wanna make it look like a different IP address. Traditionally used in really primarily one use case, it's connecting internal address space to the internet, making it public, or having a source IP address be the public IP that you are, that is routable. The second use case is when you're connecting two networks together, like you're joining two companies and they've got overlapping internal address space. Then you need to do that to enable connectivity between those two companies or organizations. So those are the two types of use cases. There is static NAT, dynamic NAT, PAT, destination NAT, DNAT, double NAT, all these NATs. Uh, so what do they mean? All right, so the first thing is a static NAT. That is the most common NAT in terms of giving access from the public internet to let's say a website or a server. So static NAT is a one-to-one -one NAT. I have an internal IP address and I translate it to a public IP address. Uh, so that's if you have a web server internally, you're gonna give it a static public IP address so people out on the internet can connect to it and it will translate it to the internal address. The second is dynamic NAT or port address translation. This is common for internal networks connecting to the internet. And so what it does is it says, there is an internal IP address of, let's just call it 10.1.1.1 going out to the internet, 4.2.2.1, some public IP address. It is going to go through the firewall or translation device, could be a router. And what it's going to do is map the source IP and source port in combination with the destination IP and the destination port and build a table. And it's gonna change that source IP to be the IP of the source pool or the snap pool or the dynamic NAT pool. And then it's gonna send it out and then when the traffic comes back in, it's gonna logically build out a table that knows what the reverse session is gonna be. It's gonna send it back to the internal host and it's all managed through that connection table. The next thing is destination NAT or DNAT. So that's if I'm connecting to something and I wanna change the destination. This would be commonly used if you had two organizations peering up and they have overlapping space. So let's say for example, I want to connect to 4.4.4.4 and that real IP of the host is 2.2.2.2. So I connect to 4.4.4, it then translates the destination to 2.2.2.2 and the host doesn't know that I connected to a different IP address. So that is destination net. So the destination, we're changing the destination to something else. And so there is double NAT and that is where you take source NAT and destination NAT, you mash them together and you do the same thing at the same time. So you're NATing the source and you're NATing the destination. So let's say my source is 10.1.1.1 and I'm going to 4.2.2.2 and I'm going to put that through double NAT and it's gonna change the source to, let's say it's 12.12.12 uh, .12 and the destination now is not gonna be 4.2.2.2, it's gonna be 3.2.2.2.2. And so that would be both using both source NAT and destination NAT. That is called the double NAT, primarily used when you're connecting organizations with overlapping IP space together. All right, so when we talk about NAT, it introduced some problems. Things like FTP and other applications like voice can have issues with translation because in the actual application layer, it's referring to the IP addresses. So you need something like ALG or application layer gateway where it's intelligent, it's looking inside the packets and going, hey, that IP address needs to be changed to the translated IP address so that the application functions. And so back in the day in the original NAT type stuff, the first phase of NAT, 
uh, it didn't have that some of the ALG and it would break applications. But now in the modern day firewalls and modern day translation devices, they have ALG to handle some of those F applications like voice and FTP and things like that. Uh, active FTP, I might add. Um, I think that covers NAT. If I said anything in this video that you are like, whoa, give me more of that, do a video on that, comment and send us a message, tweet me. It's right up there on the right. Make sure you like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Peace out.